April 23rd, Sam Walton. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. Walton opened his first retail store in 1945. Not a Walmart or a Sam's Club. It was the first Ben Franklin, which grew into a 15-store franchise. If Ben Franklin executives had agreed to Walton's proposals to open big retail stores in small rural areas, the Walmart chain would probably not exist. Walton left the Franklin chain and created his own empire built on the managerial principle that retail prosperity requires close links among suppliers, shareholders, and employees. He opened his first Walmart store in 1962, and on this date, in 1977, Illinois became the 10th state to have a Walmart store. Throughout his journey, Walton made a lot of choices. Today's story is about Sam, when all the choosing is about done. The choices we make today yield the consequences we face tomorrow. 74-year-old Sam Walton lay in bed fighting for his life. I blew it, he thought, as he sighed deeply in his hospital bed. In the background, a cardiac monitor beeped in a mostly steady rhythm. It had only been weeks since President George W. Bush had flown to Walton's home and presented him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Walton's career accomplishments ranked high, but now, alone with his thoughts, Walton came face to face with his own mortality. For more than a week, Sam had been in the hospital, surrounded by medical devices and a conscientious medical staff. It mattered little to any of them that this titan of business had founded the Walmart retail chain and expanded it to become one of the largest companies and employers in history. Without warning, illness had reduced Walton to the very human and humble state of completely relying on others. Suddenly, the treasured moments of his family and friends who stopped in to offer a smile, a hug, or a prayer, these became more valuable than anything else he had ever accomplished in life. In the chilling stillness when he was alone, Walton thought about the steep price he had paid to become one of the world's wealthiest men. He hardly knew his youngest son, who had spent a lifetime neglecting his own family and was privately in a marriage with a woman who had only decided to stay with him out of principle. How had he let this tragedy happen? On April 5th, 1992, Medical staff called Sam's family. It didn't look like Sam was going to make it. This would be Walton's last day in the hospital and his final day on earth. As his closest family filed solemnly into his room, Sam's friends and business associates gathered prayerfully in the waiting room nearby. Hospital staff silently made their way in and out of the room intently monitoring Sam's declining condition. His family held hands and prayed, and the tempo of the beeping heart monitor slowed. Then the room fell silent. Everyone gathered around his hospital bed. Sam struggled to whisper his last three words. I blew it. In Mark 8:36, God's word tells us, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Take a moment and consider what you would like your last words to be. Are you living a life that will allow you to say those last words when the time comes? Are you willing to pray and ask God to show you what needs to change in your life today and give you His strength to change? The choices we make today yield the consequences we face tomorrow. Thank you for listening to today's story. 
Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real-life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.